the aftershocks of the 2008 financial crisis still being felt far from Wall Street in the Caribbean, where tighter controls and aversion to risk have left nations such as Belize essentially cut off from the international banking system. Yagana Torbati traveled to Belize and saw firsthand the effects of the trend known as debanking or de-risking. I went down to Belize City. Um, I interviewed uh, different um, Belizean business owners. And Belize is really ground zero for this trend. Um, only two Belize banks remain, maintain any relationships with U.S. banks. The businesses that I spoke to, you know, it used to take them moments to clear transactions and to, to pay their suppliers um, in the U.S. or abroad. And now they really have to set aside weeks. U.S. banks like Bank of America, Citibank, and Wells Fargo have been pulling out of the Caribbean altogether. There's been a greater focus among regulators, among U.S. banks and European banks on getting rid of any business that is seen as even slightly risky. The Caribbean countries, because they're small, they don't have much of a manufacturing base, they, they depend um, disproportionately on trade. So losing those banking links um, can be really harmful to their economies. The Caribbean officials that we've spoken to say that it really raises the possibility that their economies could uh, really go belly up and their societies could be destabilized. Regulators enforce the tough new banking rules, but they also discourage de-risking. Regulators say that they don't encourage de-risking, they don't want to be seeing it, but those remittance services are used by um, the world's poorest people to send funds back and forth, and they often keep entire families out of poverty with, with their wages. And so that raises real concerns among the World Bank and um, other uh, international organizations that the global goal of financial inclusion is really being uh, hampered by this trend.